Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast series where we're discussing 24 pointers to be considered for 2024. So beginning with part two, Ria, what can you tell us about pointers from the purchase side? Well, yes, Rishi. I have a lot to say in this area because the amount of analysis that we do on the purchaser side is very much important. Now, number one, what we emphasize for all our clients, all the entities in general, is the documentation that you require. So the documentation, not only from the supplier, but also that all the requirements as per Article 59 of the regulations need to be precisely mentioned, otherwise your tax invoice is non-compliant. Number two, not only should you have the documentations in place, but also you should have the intention to pay mm -hmm. in order to claim the input tax credit. This is often substantiated by your standard operating processes and procedures, and hence the FDA or the any authority needs to know that you have the intention to pay the supplier when you're claiming an input tax credit on this. Now, you have a time limit, a six month time limit to pay your supplier. What happens in most cases is although the entity, the taxpayer takes the input tax credit on it, they sometimes it could happen that the supplier is not paid. In this case, you need to reverse the input tax credit claim. Another important and linked area in this is once you have reversed this, you also have the right to claim this input tax credit back, which is why you need to maintain proper uh, documentation to claim it back once the payment is made. Now, you have, suppose you've received an invoice and you have so, uh, fulfilled all the input tax recovery rules. You have two tax periods to ensure that you can claim the input tax credit on this. So proper uh, proper documentation needs to be maintained to substantiate. We've also seen in cases that uh, FTA is also now asking whether when the, in not only the invoice date, when the invoice is being received by the entity and when the payment is made. So again, we come back to the point where documentation, documentation and more documentation is just the way to go for this. But another area I would like to emphasize is the blocked input tax credit. Now, any, any expense, for example, a staff party, um, an outing, an entertainment expense that companies often take for their employees, which is not directly related to their economic activity, which is an entertainment activity, should be blocked immediately. So these are areas that we would like to highlight in purchases. And I'm sure you have a lot more to say for the other side as well. Absolutely. Thank you for the very interesting points, Ria. Um, I think I'll just shed some light on the practical pointers that need to be considered as well from a compliance perspective. So number one, first and foremost, reconciliation. Now, reconciliations are important from both the revenue and output tax perspective, right? Um, so your revenues and your output tax as per your financial statements need to be aligned with what you actually report in the VAT return. This, this would uh, aid the FTA in showing that there's no leakage of revenue or leakage of tax that is being missed to report in your VAT return, and it becomes of utmost importance that this is maintained. On similar lines, uh, reconciliation of the expense side, your purchases, and the input tax with your VAT return also needs to be maintained by taxpayers. And I cannot stress enough the importance of this because what in turn this reconciliation will enable you to do is to ensure that you're not under-reporting your input VAT, that you've not missed anything, or you're not uh, duplicating your input tax claims or over-reporting it as well. And it's important to note this extends to import of goods as well. It's important to maintain that reconciliation with your customs data or your customs records as well. Right? Uh, another a very important one is that uh, lately the FTA has made updates on EMR tax um, to emphasize the aspect of updating your registration records, right? So wherever you have your trade licenses, your Emirates ID of authorized signatories and other documentary aspects, it's important that they need to be updated with the FTA through your amendments to the registrations on the portal, All right? And uh, next coming to an important point, uh, companies that do exempt supplies input tax apportionment, right? So it's very important that they thoroughly review their calculation basis and they document which method that they're electing to do as well. Um, you think of aspects such as the annual wash up calculation as well. So this needs to be in check and needs to be thoroughly reviewed because it's being reviewed in detail during audits. Um, moving on also, there is an aspect of, now there are many transactions that are unique to every company, right? 
Um, so wherever there's some ambiguity in the treatment, you're unsure, and the, the legislation is not quite clear. It's important that companies uh, t use their right to have a private technical clarification from the FDA to uh, get it in document what the FDA's views and the according treatment that they should follow. Finally, I'd say as a conclusive point, the uh, need of the R, the utmost important aspect is planning for an audit, which includes number one, maintenance of the FDA audit file. So um, the format that they would require during an audit uh, needs to be maintained for each and every tax period. And it's important to uh, envisage that any you know, errors that you find in your reviews and your health checks need to be corrected. So you need to plan for those rectification measures. And uh, finally, just collate all the documents to ensure that all compliances, not just pertaining to your VAT return, but from a holistic perspective is considered. And these pointers should definitely be in your mind going forward in the year 2024.